Greetings, YouTube! Today I'll be talking about an illustrated history of guns and small arms. Um, this is from the Peerage Puff Publishing and advertised as 135 color illustrations, Joseph G. Rosa and Robin May. This was originally published in 1974, so it's fairly old. And does it have a different no, it has the price in here. I paid five dollars for this at a uh, an antique shop. Um, so here we go. We got contents, myths, match locks, and wheel locks. The flintlock and its revival. The percussion lock. The revolver. Sporting guns. The rifle. Rapid fire. An index and acknowledgments. And the reason I picked this up is because of these incredibly good illustrations. They're just some really really pretty things in here um, from pictures of. Um, the pistols themselves uh, to illustrations of um, some of the earliest use of guns of, uh, of black powder in the, in the field. I mean, some of these pictures are just astounding. They really are. Um, here we have examples of uh, I believe that's Chinese riflemen or musketeers, I should say. Here we have uh, wheel locks. An air, uh, a weapon that many people completely have utterly completely forgot about it even existed. I mean, look at the beauty of those weapons. They just were, really were astounding, weren't they? They were works of art at the time. Well, they were they were works of art. I mean, there were a lot of time and effort went into building one of these things, and uh, they were not mass produced. I mean, each one of these was an individual um, creation that some gunsmith labored over um, custom made normally for a single person not a lot of these things were going to be be knocking these things out just for just for speculate speculative sale um you know, like just lovely stuff in there the kind of things that any any uh pirate with his name would would would, would, uh, would want to have like a still small stubby little um not walking that one um, look at that. These are really well photographed. Just lush colors, good, nice use of lighting and uh, of background. But that's the reason I picked this up, was because of the illustrations. And uh, I, uh, I'm always looking for good illustrations for collection, addition to my, uh, my weapons library. Because you never know when you're going to find them. And I wasn't particularly looking in the market for... Uh, for a cap and ball um, revolver. Wasn't in the market for this kind of book that day, but I picked this up and I also picked up a, uh, a fro mallet. These are breakdown style. I always liked that kind of, I kind of liked it was a, an interesting faster method of, of uh, extracting and then loading in uh, New rounds, but that's my opinion. I gotta tell you, I find that to be a remarkably unattractive pistol. There's something about that particular design that I've never liked. I can't really tell you why. Just I never liked it. Um, we get into some of the sporting guns here. Oops. Shotguns. Shotgun with a rather interesting extraction and uh, method here, locking method. I've never seen that particular design before on this uh, this uh, this book, and that's one of the reasons I happen to love these things because you're always going to be surprised by some of the things from from um, from history. There's so many designs out there; it's impossible to have a complete record of it in any one reference book. In fact, the antique shop I was at had a couple of uh, really nice quality historical firearms for sale. And they were priced for historical firearms, but they were still quite pleasant. Um, to, to, and I had a chance to, to hold one of the must one of the, the uh, flintlock muskets. And there we have a fully automatic, a classic Thompson submachine gun, originally marketed uh, with straight magazines for a uh, Lewis uh, machine gun. Uh, the Thomas 17 was aimed at ranchers and such, going after varmints, believe it or not. We have a Maxil, or Maxim, rather. We have the classic Luger, and then the 
broom handled Mauser. More machine guns, submachine guns I should say. And then we get into the uh, relatively modern era, because in 74, these were uh, relatively new. And I always wanted one of these. I never got one. The AR-7, I always thought it would be cool to have one, but I never got one. Um, and then we have uh, your, your back cover. So uh, there you go. I'm quite happy to add this to my collection. Um, it's got some lovely illustrations. Um, I haven't bothered to look online to see how common these things are. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just quite pleased that I found a copy.